Well, hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome back to Manor Lords. This game now available on Steam for its demo of Steam's next event is been <laughs> it's been very highly, highly, highly anticipated, and that's putting it lightly. In the last episode, we were building our city and getting started for winter survival, and now the time has come. We've reached December of our first year, and now berries are now going to be, well, dying out. There's no more food for us aside from hunting, and so we'll have to see if we can survive our first winter. So, as always, if you'd like to see more of Manor Lords and any other game on the channel, make sure you click, tap, blow up, and destroy the like button, and also subscribe right now, and make sure that you turn on that notification bell so you never miss out on another stream or video. Lots of giveaways and much more to do in this. I, I'm going to be having a lot of fun. So welcome aboard to all of you. Well, let's go ahead and uh, get started by expanding our town. We've built quite a bit of a city now. We've got population of, wow, 27 people in the city. And um, that's actually quite good from the five that we started with in our first year. More homes are being constructed. Firewood is being uh, procured as we're making now food and fuel for the winter. And also lots and lots of pelts being made from the deer that are going to be slaughtered for the winter and hunted down too. Lots of homes here already. Very nice. One of the goals we have is to try to upgrade these homes to tier 2, which will require us to provide them with a few things such as multiple, multiple food sources, multiple clothing sources or variety, also entertainment and faith. So a big old church is going to have to be built at some point. We've got our logging camp kind of clearing land up on the top of the hill now to make it so that way we could probably build most of the town up here with other supporting things like farms and uh, mines and other things around as soon as we expand the city. Although, of course, there is an area here to mine, and we'll get to that shortly. All right, let's go ahead and keep cutting that area down. As more homes are filled in and more people move into the city, we'll have ourselves more people to then assign to jobs such as foraging, and hunting and fishing. Well, no fishing just yet, but we'll see. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look here at the wood cutting. That seems to give us a month of fuel. And wow, look at that. We've got 77 food going up quite a bit. Timber's a little low, so let's go ahead and reduce the number of people working at the wood cutter and increase the number of people working at the logging camp. There we go. That'll get us more wood to then be cut into firewood. We're going to speed up time just a little bit now. Now, one of the things about this demo that's going to make recording and making these series a little strange is that we can't necessarily save. And so in order to process these videos, the game will have to be shut down so I can bring you guys more footage. And so thus, we won't be able to return to any of these previous cities that we build until the developer either puts in a save mode or well, the game is released and has that feature included. So, we're going to try to build as long as we can and go forward into these cities. We're going to be making tons of mistakes and doing things differently. And of course, I encourage you guys, especially in the previous video and in this one, to definitely go back to that first video or this one and give any sorts of tips or tricks that you may have learned after you downloaded it for yourself and gave it a little bit of a try. Of course, we're basing a lot of this off the early Steam demo release, so some of these things necessarily aren't even available to the public just yet, as we got a little early access, and the developer has added already a first patch before it being released too, changing a few things at how, for example, grain works when it comes to farming, and a few people getting to uh, doing farming and realizing that some of the people who should be bringing things to the granary bring it to their own homes rather than uh, bringing it to share with everybody else. So in other words, you could have one home that has tons of food and another home that's completely starving, and rather than distributing the food to all the homes, somebody hoards it and uh, everybody else dies to death, which ain't great. All right, we have a tool available, which means we could also do, of course, uh, upgrades to these homes. This is great about this game. I mentioned this in our previous episode, the ability to do a vegetable garden chicken coop or a goat shed based on trading. We'll need money for those, but the vegetable garden can just be made with tools. So once we start producing more and more of those, our town will be a little bit more self-sufficient and have food variety. And so that might be part of upgrading these plots a bit by allowing them to have our different types of food varieties and kind of taking a little bit of the burden off the hunters and the um, farmers too by having their own sources. Oh, love to see it. The ox is actually going out and gathering logs now from the uh, cutting site. So wherever the logging camp is doing its work, 
It'll actually bring the logs back to the camp and then bring it to a construction site. Hitching posts going to be important then. Having multiple ox are going to be very, very important. That's for sure. That's going to increase our transportation quite a bit. Our influence is increased to 225. That's fantastic. Let's see if we can do anything in any of these other cities just yet. It looks like we can trade or we can claim territories. Wow, we can actually expand our city a bit. We can claim with influence of a thousand or we can claim with favor and I'm assuming that's something to do with the king where we may owe a certain number of troops by a certain time or maybe perhaps tools or food or money and uh, you know like buy, you know buy now pay later type of thing either it being financial or some other means all right wow look at that yeah we definitely need some more ox more oxen are going to be incredibly important here as of course that's going to slow down the whole production chain so we could build ourselves a trading post for that but it's going to be a little bit of time and we probably need to generate some money before we do that but yeah allows for importing of or exporting of animals and livestock for silver good thing then you probably start with a few uh, female sheep and a male sheep and then of course you can trade them off same with chickens and it also looked like there was co I think cows too yeah must be a way to uh, be able to trade them all right trading post as well well we barely have much to trade at the moment I don't think we would want to trade until we have something in production like clothing tools those types of things let's go ahead and increase we've got more people moving in so let's increase the number of loggers we've got and we need more fuel we don't want people to freeze so let's make sure we improve upon that more logs being produced we now have eight we certainly want a lot more for the spring oh look at that oh fuel we also have charcoal in the game used to warm up homes in the winter and smithing so the smith will take charcoal so there must not be a way to mine coal and then the homes will take firewood interesting we have fuel for zero months but it doesn't mean that we have zero fuel we actually have 24 of it so we have quite some time to continue to generate that and uh, also timber too so I would imagine that they would probably stop using fuel in maybe March, perhaps? Something along those lines. I like having the city kind of separated from the hill here a little bit. But let's build a little bit of an extra pathway down to the bottom here, maybe around here. There we go. Of course, you can hold control and then use your mouse wheel in order to increase the intensity of the turns my god the music in this game is too good too good i feel like somebody's already died no estella that's too old of a reference okay oh look at this areas to store hay old wagons outhouses and I don't know what I was thinking here but you know go back and watch the first episode to see the true battle our first battle in the game being with the roads uh, and uh, housing system there quite hilarious actually to see something like that take place <laughs> it was funny we got to get more homes though we need more people in the city so we can do more jobs so let's continue to build on to that kind of waiting to see what happens when we get through winter saving this area here for the church don't want to build on the back actually with the iron mine that I would like to build there at some point. And of course our hitching post there. Could we build a home here? Hmm, unfortunately the plot is too small. Let's change our starting location. Ah, there it's permitted. Good. I do like that though. All the houses should certainly not be like this, although this is much more efficient for space and also, of course, making sure that we kind of keep everything in the same area. Maybe it looks a little bit nicer from a distance, but I would say kind of plotting like the, the, how we just did is a little bit more realistic. And I certainly don't want to cut down all the trees just because. It's certainly painful, actually, to, to cut down trees when you don't have to 
pains me to do that. It's one of the things I hate to do in Farthest Frontier, for example. And that's what this game echoes a lot. Farthest Frontier and Ostrev and uh, also Anno 1800 and some of the other resource gathering and building games that you may have seen many times before on the channel. It's a good one, and I like it. Looks like the area there is a little too steep to build on, so we'd need to keep up here or possibly down here. Let's go ahead and build maybe a small village down here. Let's see what it looks like if we plot out this way. Oh, we could build like three... Ah, oh, wow, we could build like five homes there. Crazy. All right. Well, let's go ahead and build down there. They're close to the marketplace as well. The marketplace here, as well as a well. And we haven't even started to begin to sell anything from those marketplaces, too. Too busy gathering resources and trying to store them. Especially all those uh, logs from the logging camp for fuel. To which we have 17 firewood. We're getting through now at probably mid to late January, although it's hard to see a date. I don't see one anywhere other than the month. I wonder if our lord changes clothes. Ah, yes, this is great. The ability to go down to like first person level, but wander around in third person is crazy cool. Wow. Look at the mountains and stuff. This is ridiculous. What a game, man. What a game. Amazing. Wow. Oh, wow. You can see everybody doing the construction here. Parts of the home being constructed with planks. Parts of the home being constructed with clay and doing a little bit of plaster work there. Waddle being put in and also the stone foundation. Wow, that actually is a lot more than just uh, two people. Everybody here is uh, from an, a, a different job and they're doing this job now. And, and you can also see snow on these guys. They do have winter clothing and there's actual snow on their sleeves and on their clothing. That is impressive. This is a city builder, damn it. And it's got that level of detail. Now keep in mind that this is not just a city builder. This is the demo that showcases a lot of that, which you'll be doing primarily in this game to build up your military forces, but it does have a lot of that Total War level combat in it, and that's going to be something else, man. It's going to be like two completely different games in one that are very well tied together, and that's going to be interesting to see. Looks like we have a merchant coming along the road too. This will be where we sell off our clothing, or sell off our uh, maybe uh, food or whatnot. Let's build like a little junction here. Something like that'll look cool. Just for fun. Just for funsies. Alright, let's go ahead and speed up. I don't think there's much more we can do aside from kind of ride out the winter now. We certainly have enough cl uh, food for the winter. And now we just need to wait for more homes to upgrade by providing them those things I mentioned before. Woodcutter's working great. Hunting camp's working great. Now, the forager. Enable idle laborers. Use this setting to control where peasants should use the building as a temporary job when they're idle. Ah, so the forger hut and the logging camp we can make as buildings where people will go to when they're not doing anything else. So there should be a setting then to allow the forger hut to be able to do something else or to have those workers do something else. Maybe there's a way to do this. There might be a way to allow the forger building that when the people at the forger building cannot work, they can then go to a different job. So for example, in the winter, perhaps they can then become firewood cutters or something like that or go work at the lumber mill, that kind of thing. However, on assigning them will mean that they will work construction and repair. There is upkeep in this game, so it will be needed for the materials to be able to do that type of uh, construction and maintenance. Whatever the building may be, they might need stone for certain buildings, and they might need wood and planks for others. We'll have to see how that all pans out. Alright, let's build a... well, let's continue actually working just like that. Wow, March! We made it through, as I predicted. Yes, good. Good. All according to plan. Hey, look at that. Did more wild animals migrate into our lands, or was there a third one and I didn't see it? Hmm. 
Interesting. Well, if we uh, only do meat, our people are probably going to get gout and scurvy. So we better do uh, a little bit more than just the uh, meat hunting. I'll have to get berries, but I'll have to grow back soon. All right, let's continue on fast forward times four. Those are the speeds, by the way. One, four, and 16 times. Wow, that's very fast. Ah, uh, look at how cool that looks, dude. This is fantastic. What a great looking city. My goodness, that is... Wow. Is there an option for... Uh, now there must be an option for a photo mode. It would be fantastic, though, to see it on the screen. If there's this uh, wonderful visit mode. Also, a work in progress. Wow. Okay. So, let's get extra workers working the market now. We'll have somebody working at the food market. Somebody working at the fire stall. And clothing stall. Well, this is cool. There's already people delivering things. That they've been stocking up these markets for quite some time. So, before the workers even got here, they've been uh, doing that. Looks like somebody just grabbed firewood here and is going to be selling that or delivering that to homes. I would like already, though, the option in this game to do decoration. So I, I would love to put some sort of fencing around here, add some trees, make it kind of look a little lively, and regrow some of the areas that I may have cut down, which is why I want to leave some of these trees, too. I, I don't want the mountain to be completely cut clean, although certain areas I certainly do. Oh, looks like the forge is ready to work again. Go ahead and put two people working there. I guess one. One. And more homes completed. Wow, 43 people in the town already? Jeez. So it looks like the three classes, there are three upgradable home types in this game. 15 peasant families. And then there's no burger families and artisans are after that. So peasants would be then the farmers and the uh, loggers and such. The burgers could be... Uh, maybe something along the line of merchants and people working in sales and uh, transporting and selling things to other areas. And then artisans could be our fine craftsmen for things such as, um, well, it could be something along the lines of smiths. So things like blacksmiths and whatnot. As I haven't seen anything too fancy aside from weaving, which would be the other thing that might take a little bit more skill. A lot more know-how. Oh, look at that. The firewood cutter working great. Is there a limit to this? Oh, we have eight months of fuel. Fantastic. Let's limit that down. I don't see a way to set a limit for this building, though. Unlike with the hunter. Where we can uh, limit it to 20 hunting limit. There doesn't seem to be a production limit for some of these buildings. Storehouse and the granary are working just fine. And it looks like we need a bit more food. Makes sense, right? We're coming into spring. 88 meat and 4 berries. Still need more. So farming we could start on, but we must get more workers to do that. So that's why we opted to build the homes first. Looks like we'll need to build a farm first used to employ peasants in the fields. So we could build a field first, however. And Emmer seems like it's going to have a lot of great fertility back here. We build it on the steep mountains. Let's see. Love how it gives you a final confirmation before you do that. All right. It does look like we can farm here on the hillside. So let's go ahead and do that. Max field workers, 6-5. Oh, boy. Um, so a field this large is already going to employ five people. Wow. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and put the field here. And we could work up the population a little bit. Let's see if we could actually get this up to the corner. Fields can be a little too large, so... This would employ eight people. I like it. Let's do it. Ah, look at that. Wow, the field's already muddy. Look at that. Love how there's bushes and trees and, well, small tree trees and other shrubs all around the farm. That's really good looking. Already looks like the farm's been there for some time. Love it. 
Wow, the farm's going to be a big building. Ah, but we need resources for that one tool, which we have, and four timber. So we'll have to continue to gather that from the logging camp. Now, one mistake you could make is spending that tool on getting excited to do some basic farming here. So with the uh, bigger houses that we constructed at the start, although it looks like I can't do the upgrades to the... Uh, oh, it looks like we lost the opportunity to upgrade some of those houses. But um, the houses that would allow us to put a plot... Here we go. One of them, the vegetable garden, would take the tools. So good. thank goodness we didn't do that. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do farming on a larger scale. Uh, one little tiny... Uh, carrot garden in the back of a house is the same as building a large barn, so good thing we're going for the barn instead. Or in this case, the farm. What an interesting looking building, too, with the curve. Let's go ahead and not snap. Let's see where we could put that. I think it would look nice here. Uprooted trees, three, but we just need more... Uh, people from the logging camp to do that. Alright, let's go ahead and leave the people who are unemployed unemployed. I really wish the uh, logging camp could get more uh, help that way. We could build another logging camp though. We certainly need it. Although I just don't want to disturb the animals. Let's do more logging down here. Of course, it takes two lumber to already build that. Ugh. Okay, what does it take to build a farm? Uh, of course, we have a mining pit, too, for clay and iron. Well, another good thing about building the farm down here is that when it's gathered, it probably goes to the farm first and is either stored there until it can be used. We will need to actually make a windmill, too, so we'll have to think about that. But we will need to at least start farming for a few seasons. Grain could last for a while. We might be alright. Forester Hut also replants trees, but uh, I think they've started to regrow quite quickly on their own. Alright, well let's build this farm instead. Let's go for the uh, farming. We can now plop this down. Is that a clay deposit there, maybe? I haven't seen an actual clay indicator, so I'm not sure what it looks like or where it's found exactly just yet. Build our farm here. Oh, look at that. If it's close enough, it already auto-connects. So that looks fantastic, the way that looks. With the uh, little pathways coming out of the farm. Fantastic. And with more people unemployed, that means that those people are going to be working on the farm building. So they're going... They already immediately have a job. Cool. <laughs> These buildings kind of look a little weird, admittedly. With the perfect fence line like that looks almost too perfect. Alright, we're probably low on food again. But that's alright. We're going to worry a little bit more about food during the winter. Although we could get a few people working on the berries. Let's do that. 74. Let's make sure all that's harvested before the end of the year. And that resource could grow in the early spring and then be able to harvest until the end of, well, the beginning of winter. But perhaps maybe every season it'll regrow. Perhaps there's a spring and a summer and a autumn a blooming of those. I'm not exactly sure. Merchant coming through again. Another great thing, I, I don't know if I mentioned this about the demo, but all these other regions we are free to build in either A, by obtaining them uh, through, of course, you know, influence and such, or B, by just randomly spawning there. So look at these rivers and such looking incredible. There's just so much to cover in this game. Everything from the landscapes to the military aspects. Oh man, I hope we get a water wheel or something. That'd be incredible. What if there's bridges? Let's see. I'm assuming it's just a... Probably a shallow crossing. Something like this, for example. Game's a work in progress, so a lot of things are being worked on by primarily a single man. I mean, that's, that's crazy. Uh, other as assets that you may have seen, music and such, are being worked on by multiple people. But all the heart and soul and the blood of this game are all being made by one person. So anytime I see something out of the ordinary, it's like, well, I couldn't do that. Not even close. So I'm not going to complain. 
I, I just want to see it succeed, baby. Oh, look at that heavy rain. Heavy rain. Oh, lots of food now, but we need more. And we need that farm to be completed. Raptoria farms must thrive. More wild animals there. Berries now down to 56. I'm going to assign another person to work there. Want to make sure we harvest all of those before the end of the year. Hmm. Now, what does the church take for building? I didn't actually look at that quite yet. Only eight timber. Wow. Eight logs need to be delivered to the church, and that's it. So we could easily plop that down, like, right here. wonder if this building also has cemeteries or, uh, like, uh, burial plots or whatnot. We can make a little graveyard. Not sure what we would do in the instance of death in this game. Again, we're playing on kind of the standard middle-of-the-road settings. For a first playthrough, it's not bad. A lot of my hardcore gamer experience is coming into play here. <laughs> Yeah, right, but it's more like uh, all the previous games that I played, of course, every game, no matter what, is going to, if it's simulating medieval life, it's going to require firewood, it's going to require farming. These are just the things that are required by the time period. These are things that people just did. Um, you know, making militaries, fighting each other, trading influence, those types of things, all aspects of the medieval world. So it, it does make sense to see that here. Oh yeah, we, we certainly need to make ourselves another logging camp for sure. Uh, maybe it's not necessarily the logging camp, but the hitching post. Problem with this is that, uh, that we only have one oxen. It's a shame we don't see two people like on either side of the log actually transporting the log. Be nice if the oxen did it faster, or if the ox could carry... If oxen in the game could maybe carry two or three logs at a time, so if a construction site requires five, you'd only have to take a couple of trips, or, you know, the oxen could pull three and then a group of four people could carry the other remaining ones, or, you know, two people taking multiple trips, that kind of thing. Take a look at the barn being built then. Looking great. Been recently enjoying a medieval castle being constructed as well. Uh, that's been under construction for 30 or so years, being done realistically. I think it's, uh, is it Gudon Castle? Something along that? Gudon Castle? Very in impressive to see a lot of that technology put into place. Finding out about that originally in Age of Empires 4, they talked about that, and I went back and watched a lot of that. So very astonishing to see medieval defensive structures and farms and such built in the time period with uh, period era equipment and tools all done by hand wow would you look at that construction complete on the farm oh wow a lot of people can work at the farm threshing priority medium interesting so that is basically them taking the stalks of grain and then beating the grain out of those stalks in order to be used for bread or i guess being made into flour interesting all right, let's see if they'll automatically work. Oh, it's a follow. Oh, yes, we need to select a crop. Okay, this is interesting. So this is what I wanted to see most in this game, the farming. Crop types of emmer, flax, and barley. Emmer having the best chance to succeed here. Oh, it has crop rotation. Fantastic. And we can also do a follow field if we want to. So we can do a three-year... Yes, perfect. Three-year uh, rotation. We can do a follow field and then go back to emmer. So it'll be emmer, follow, emmer, emmer, follow. Which means that it'll g regain some of its fertility. We don't have access to things like potatoes or uh, carrots or cabbage or whatnot for these larger fields. Some of those things haven't been discovered and or uh, are just simply not... Like, we don't even know they exist, honestly. And or how to take care of them on a large scale. Interesting. Well, let's begin with the farming. Let's go ahead and have two people work there. And let's go ahead and build a mill now. A windmill. Dutch breathing intensifies. 
Oh, yes. I hear you. Let's build it over here. Now, I believe this mill might be able to rotate, perhaps, to follow the wind, but we'll see. I don't even see wind blades on this. Also, unfortunate, no way to uh, actually level or adjust terrain. So I guess we'll just do this. Efficiency up. Excellent. All right, we'll see what that means later on. Okay, let's go back to our normal speed and build another logging camp now. We, we've got to. Actually, let's take a look. Hmm. Ah, you know what? There's four logs here. They need to be transported, though, into storage. I think it's all coming down to the ox. So once we have enough things to trade, we'll do that. Oh, we're building a windmill now. Fantastic. Next will be our communal oven, which might require water. So maybe we'll keep that near the town somewhere. Keep it on the back side of the hitching post here. But we need two timber to do that. Well, there we go. Wow, windmill looking great. What you doing there, pal? Jeez. Ooh, a heavy storm coming through. Oh, looks like the windmill is automatic. Oh, wait a minute. The windmill is not a permanent job. The windmill is actually assigned to the farm workers, so whomever might be free from the fields after the planting is complete, they might then be automatically assigned to the uh, windmill. Interesting. I also saw the word nickel. Is that that person's name? Or is that a material? That must be a person's name. Oh, actually, the, my mistake. The windmill is not completed in its construction. My mistake. It's hard to believe that because it actually looks done. I mean, I'm no expert on windmill building, but that looks like a windmill to me. Looks like it's ready to go. Wow, the fact that nobody's died must mean this must be a damn well edited uh, video. Excellent work to my editor for editing out all my incompetence. All right. Glory to Raptoria, my man. Who? Okay. Well, let's see here. Uh, let's continue our speed. Continue the home construction if we can. Somewhat misleading here because we, we do technically have two logs in storage. I mean, I can see them both. And we have two out of 28, although it says one. So does lumber have to be transported to the... Uh, it might be reserved. Oh, it has to be transported to the storehouse. But even this says zero. But that might be because it's reserved by the woodcutter, which says one out of 50. Although I'm not sure if that's a stack of timber wood or, or uh, sorry, firewood or like a timber log sitting there. Not sure. Now well, there goes our ox again into the forest. So another note, it might be a good idea to keep your hitching post near your lumber mill. So when you build your first city, it might be a good idea to either build your logging camp near a forested area and relocate your hitching post or make sure that you build directly next to it and clear an area for a town as I've done here. This is incredible looking. Windmill's done. Oh, my mistake. All right, so a windmill does take people. I thought perhaps it was, as it said, efficiency up, that it might be a passive bonus to productivity and then thus create flour from that, but it is a a job that needs to be tended to. All right, the field. Looks like people are working on that. Timber is coming in. I do like this. This is going to take a very long time to actually build up your regions. It's not like it's going to take two or three years uh, just to get things running. It might take uh, 20 or 30 years to have a whole region fully developed to where it's taking advantage of the resources around it. 
Like, for example, I've seen honey before in some of these regions, although it seems like every time that you play, it will change. So uh, locations of things will be different. Here we see salt, iron, berries. There could be new discoveries, too, in finding some of these resources once these areas are more settled. And um, interesting to see apiaries in order to create, uh, or the potential to make those, so that way we can actually do uh, candle making, which would be a fantastic thing to be able to trade. Um, I'm not sure exactly what, you know, like you should be able to put bees anywhere, honestly. You should be able to put a beehive near your uh, farms and be able to have hives that way. Um, so rather than just going to the source of bees and only using them in that region, you should be able to intermingle those. In other words, if you have your starting region have bees and you make a new region that you want to have produce flax, you should be able to import bees from that region to the new region in terms of... Um, beehives or whatnot. Alright, we have six timber now. Fantastic. Well, we need more hands in the city. What do we got? Two months of food. We need more farmers now. And we need that communal uh, oven to be up. So let's go ahead and build that. Now we can construct that one. Oh, okay. Just checking some of the speed settings here. It looks like Zed and X-Ray are the two keys that... Zulu and X-Ray are the two keys to control speed. Alright, let's build a road between. A little messy, but it works. Okay, so the... Um, Communal oven will be constructed, and we should build some new homes, too. Although I feel like we need much more. Much more than four logs. Five logs now. Lots of flat land needed, too. We could build some more homes up here. Oh, perfect spot for homes. Could do two. Hmm. Yeah, let's leave spots for extensions. Of course, we'll need more timber. Okay, so now we've got two more homes being constructed. Those people will go straight towards making food. Ah, great music. We'll continue to add more and more people to the farming. It looks like we can have a total of what? Two, four, six? So it looks like 12 people can be employed at the farms. Well, technically more if you consider the uh, windmill and the communal oven to be two very important buildings that complete the whole uh, gathering of grain process. It doesn't look like there's anything we can grow that can't be that cannot be processed or that can bypass the windmill. Everything has to go through the windmill. The Dutch win again. Well, at least food is looking quite good. Meat is a little low. But it might be because one of those sources... Ah, it's actually moving. I believe the animals actually migrated slightly. Possibly. They are moving a little closer to the road, but I wonder if that moves their circle. We might have to reset the uh, hunting area every couple years based on the animal's migration. Might be a good thing to keep an eye on. Logging camp, doing well. Let's go ahead and clear this out so we can eventually start our iron mine. Would be nice, too, if we could tell our citizens to also cut trees just to clear land, so that way if we wanted to build a house quickly and didn't care about losing a couple of trees, we could do it that way. Otherwise, once the logging is complete... Oh, yeah, look at that. The workers will cut down a tree, get rid of all the branches, and throw those into a pile. And then, of course, the ox will come and transport what's left. 
We could add another person to the hitching post, but uh, I don't think that gives us another ox, unfortunately. Wish it did. All right, more homes, please. Wow, that's one big old home. Not too small. It's about the size of the other one. Picky, picky. I think this is a very unique part of the actual city and home building, and uh, I'd like to see this uh, also improve a bit. I, I see a few things that are a little clunky, but uh, for this being a demo by one individual, I think it's something that uh, is really... I, I would love to see this more. In, uh, it's almost re reminiscent of city skylines when you're laying out uh, particular residential districts and such with rounded areas where you're trying to make a neighborhood look interesting but you're also trying to give it as much space as possible, or at least be efficient with the space that you give. And so in this case, uh, I feel like there could be some sort of a meter that we could see where we could kind of see the minimal size before the game will let us build a home in that area. So I'd love to see the ability to construct a home based on considering the minimum size to construct the smallest of plots and also the minimum size for also getting one of the bonuses to the, uh, to, for example, the uh, extra resources. So, all right, it is time to build a church, I think. Let's go ahead and gather up resources for that. We need, what was it, eight? Eight logs for that construction. All right, let's get two more people to the farms. 57 people in the city now. That's going to give us some soldiers when it comes time to actually build a military in future versions of the game. Alright, well, homes being constructed means food. That's good. That'll take care of some of the shortage. Shortages. Well, it looks like the berries are gone. Go ahead and add those people to the farms. Oh, would you look at the... Oh, my God, that looks incredible. Look at that, man. Look at that. All right, I wish people would stick to the roads a little bit more, but... Look at that. I think these are our new hires heading to the farms to get their supplies, but then look at that. Everybody gathering the emmer. These are some very old-school uh, terms as well with... Reminding me a bit of Dawn of Man, the ancient caveman city builder from long ago where you'd start from basically caveman times from like Neolithic era all the way through, uh, you know, the Paleolithic all the way up to the Iron Age. But they would call those things like einkorn and eventually you could make emmer and rye and things like that. Eventually making beer. Early versions of that too. And that really reminds me of that. Man, this music is so good. Of course, there's also dis uh, defensive structures that you can go ahead and prevent <laughs> demolition from. There's gatehouses, which could only mean that, yeah, we can build bailey walls too. So that's going to be an interesting thing to consider. What buildings do you want to defend and what don't you want to defend? Because you can't defend everything. But in this case, if we built a wall around the city, including maybe the farm field... Uh, we might be able to withstand, like, uh, a siege for a while, although I don't think it's that uh, complicated. Oh, would you look at that. All right, another unassigned family. Pantry limit... Oh, okay, never mind. Meat and berries are actually low, so it's not that. Oh, wow, look at that. 90 grain. All right, let's assign some people to the windmill then. Oh, it begins. It begins. 
Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm also happy that there's not like an unnecessary day-night cycle in the game. Although it is pretty to see. I've seen a lot of games try to do a day-night cycle and it can sometimes be disruptive for gameplay. Uh, because if you can't build, you, you can't see, you can't build. And that just makes it a little hard to do. Look at that city. It's nice to see all the people actually working and doing things. Transporting. It'll be nice to also see when the town gets its first blacksmith. And being able to hear the clinking and the clanging of the metals. Speaking of which, I wonder, I have not seen a blacksmith, rather a charcoal burner. We have a bloomery, a smithy, malt house. But I haven't seen a way to take wood and turn it into charcoal just yet. They did mention that. Maybe, perhaps for this version of the game, there's a workaround where the smithy just works. It doesn't require coal or something like that. Maybe it just requires iron, and it'll require charcoal later on when there's an ability to trade it. I've seen games do that before where they leave out a recipe and just allow, or an ingredient from a recipe and allow you to bypass it and then later include it. So that could definitely be a workaround until it's fully developed. Makes sense. Good way to do that. 124 pelts. I wonder if we could start trading that. That would be fantastic. I just need more and more wood. And we start with no silver at all, so we won't be able to buy an ox without building a trade depot first. And if we're going to do trade, we're going to need timber. And if we're going to uh, build that and get the timber, we're still going to need people to do it. But we have a long time to get there. What if we can actually have multiple hitching posts, too, so the oxen can start from multiple areas? Well, let's go for the trade depot, then. Let's build a regular trading depot, then we'll earn silver to then be able to trade for a maybe an ox of our another ox of our own. Perfect building to build there with no uprooting. Damn, this song is good. Game soundtrack has no reason to be this ridiculously good. Ooh, hunger, hold on. Okay, we need to remedy that quickly. Now we should have our bakery ready. Okay. Let's go ahead and immediately start creating bread. What do we have for flour? Let's take a look. Ooh, look at that. 115 grain. Producing... 10 flour. So we do have flour. And I'm not sure what the recipe for the communal oven is, but let's go ahead and take a few people off of the... Um, hmm. Well, let's take them off the farm since the harvest season is more than likely over. Let's quickly make that food. And if we have anybody die to death, we just chalk that up to experience to... Get a feel for what the death counter is like whenever the supplies are low, how resilient our people are whenever disaster strikes. To which there could be many disasters that are out of our control. We could have the best setup with the highest optimism ever, and optimization ever, and be confident in our, in our design and layout. And a drought could come, or a flood could come, and drown our crops. I feel like we have good drainage, though, on this field like this, but I don't think that's a factor in the game. Regardless... It'll be a good thing to experience for ourselves. Okay, so it looks like the communal oven is producing. Ah, you can see all the people assigned to the job now. And there they go, bringing over flour. That's cool. Somebody bringing it directly from the... Windmill, somebody bringing it directly from the storehouse. You know what's great here, too, is that it looks like the roads that are more traveled actually have become wider. 
It's actually interesting to see. Looks like over time the more traveled routes are a little larger. Wow. Very proud of this town. Very happy. No matter what happens, it looks great. We now have one... B one bread. And broad. Fantastic. Firewood, what do we have? Two months of fuel. Thirty six firewood, then. Looked like there was another harvest going on. Let me go ahead and assign just a couple people to do the farm now. Maximum flower production. To turn the... Okay, so thre Okay, so wheat becomes grain after threshing, so that is a good idea to keep people assigned to the farm if there's tons of wheat still in the farm. Bread is being created. Three bread now. To be sold. At the market. I feel like that should also... If we have a marketplace, it should be... Um, should generate funds for us. Selling food like that should generate some money. Build a trade depot. There we go. Very nice. Alright. The next thing we'll need to do is work on the church. So that'll take care of faith. Food is taken care of now with the varieties that we're producing. We have three varieties of food now. Meat, berries, and bread. Then clothing too. We'll need to start figuring that out as well. That might take a lot longer. We might need to actually uh, manage to... Well, we might be able to trade pelts for something, honestly. But we might be able to buy the clothes, but it might come down to having to buy a sheep and then going through that whole process. That's going to put me to sleep if we got to count that high, if you know what I mean. Whew. All right, let's go ahead and get a couple people on the woodcutter. Well, glory to Raptoria. That is all the time we have here today for today's episode, so thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. I honestly lost track of time. I got caught completely into this game, <laughs> and I love it. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much for smashing the like button. Hope to see you all soon. Bye, everyone.